Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In this lesson, you're gonna learn all about classifying triangles. He is concentrating very hard on classifying these triangles. So let's see what this is all about. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to classify triangles based on their angles and sides. First, we'll learn all the ways to classify triangles. Then, we'll complete two example problems using these classifications. But before we begin, it's super important for you to complete a short activity in your notes template to get ready for this lesson. It's called the Triangle Sum Theorem activity. The activity itself is included in your notes packet, but the cutouts are a separate PDF in the teaching section of this lesson. The cutouts are in a separate file rather than in your notes packet, so you don't have to cut things out of your notes packet. So pause the video now and complete this activity before continuing. How did your activity go? The goal of the activity was to reason through the triangle sum theorem. So you'll always remember that the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. This super important fact will be used to help us classify triangles by their angle measures. All triangles have two acute angles, but it's the third angle that determines what type of triangle we have. Here are two acute angles. Can you use what you just learned about the triangle sum theorem to calculate the third angle? Calculate the missing angle now. Since the angles inside the triangle add up to 180 degrees, we can subtract the two angles we had from 180 to get the final angle measure, being 76 degrees. Is 76 degrees acute, right, or obtuse? It's acute. That means this triangle is an acute triangle. Here's another triangle. The two acute angle measures are showing here. So what's the third one? Since the three angles must add up to 180, we can subtract the two angles that we have to see what's left for the remaining angle. Did you get 90 degrees for the missing angle? Triangles with a 90 degree angle are called right triangles. Look at this triangle next. Pause the video and calculate the missing angle. What type of angle is a 140 degree angle? It's an obtuse angle, which means this is an obtuse triangle. These are the three main ways we can classify a triangle based on its angles. But there is one special case of a more specific acute triangle that I want to show you. In this triangle, all of the angles are the exact same making them each 60 degrees. 60 degrees is acute, which falls into the acute triangle category, but there is a more specific name for this kind of triangle, when the angles are all equal. Can you guess what it is? We can say this is equiangular. Get it? Like equal angles, equiangular. When classifying shapes, we always want to be as specific as possible. So rather than classifying this triangle as acute, classify it as equiangular. Next, we're going to look at how to classify triangles based on their side lengths. Take a moment to pause the video if you need any more time before moving on. When classifying triangles based on their side lengths, we can look for symbols or measurements that tell us if any of the sides are the same, or maybe even calculate some side lengths ourselves. In this example, we can clearly see that all the sides are different lengths. When the sides are all different lengths, we call this a scalene triangle. This triangle has two congruent symbols showing that there are two sides that are the same length. This makes it 
an isosceles triangle. And what about this triangle? It has two congruent angles. Does two congruent angles help us classify this triangle by the sides? Not exactly, but maybe we can get there with a little help from this. The isosceles triangle theorem states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are also congruent. Or maybe the isosceles triangle theorem converse would be more helpful for our situation. A converse takes the original if-then statement and flips it. You'll learn more about converses in the next unit, but the real question here is which of these statements help us determine a relationship between the sides of our triangle. Pause the video and determine which statement is helpful to our situation. Right, it's the second statement. The isosceles triangle theorem converse tells us that since the angles are congruent, the opposite sides are congruent too. Since two sides are congruent, we have an isosceles triangle. This is the second way to classify triangles based on their side lengths. Can you guess what the third way is? A triangle can have all three sides congruent, like the triangle shown here. This is called equilateral. And a fun fact is that equilateral triangles are also isosceles. Since they have three sides congruent, they definitely have two, but we wouldn't want to call this isosceles because we want to be as specific as possible and call it equilateral. These are the three ways we can classify triangles based on their sides. We're going to try a practice problem next, so pause the video now if you need any more time to go over this information. Our first example asks us to classify the triangle by its angles and sides. Can you start by classifying this based on its angles? Our options are acute, equiangular, right, or obtuse. Which do you think it is? It has two acute angles, like all triangles, but its other angle is right, making this a right triangle. Now let's classify this by its sides. Here are our options. Do we know if any of the sides on our triangle are the same length? We were only given two of the side lengths, so we'll need to do some more investigating. Hmm. How can we find the missing side when we have a right triangle? The Pythagorean theorem. Using the Pythagorean theorem finds us the missing side. Then we can determine if this is a scalene, isosceles, or equilateral triangle. Pause the video now so you can work through this. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we get that the missing side is equal to the square root of three. This means that two of the side lengths are the same and we have an isosceles triangle. Putting both of these classifications together allows us to answer the question. We have a right isosceles triangle. In our second example, we're asked to find the missing value and classify the triangle by its angles and sides. Let's find the missing value x first. We know that these angles are the same because the sides across from them are the same. That's what the isosceles triangle theorem from earlier told us. Can you solve for x? Try it now. We have two angles that are worth x, and the other angle to add to those is 34 degrees. Subtracting 34 from 180 leaves us with 146. And a 146 divided by 2 is 73. We still need to classify the triangle based on its angles and based on its sides. Here are your options for each classification. What answer would you choose from each of these? All of the angles are less than 90 degrees, so this is acute and two sides are congruent, making it isosceles. 
This gives us the rest of our answer. That was our final example for this lesson, but there's an additional activity in your notes template that'll help you to make sure that you're ready for the practice game. You want to work through that next and complete the practice game after. See you next time. Hey.